Svelte 5 is basically here. It's in release candidate. It's not technically here, here, but it's close enough to where I'm using it in production all of my projects. I'm not building anything new without Svelte 5. It's at least for me, good enough. La 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 la, we can't hear you. If you do take it to production and things break, there are no refunds. So. And for today, what I wanna talk about is I wanna talk about all the awesome new things which have come in Svelte 5 and a couple of the things that have not gotten a huge amount of attention. So first and foremost, the biggest change in Svelte 5 is obviously runes. The complete overhaul to how the state management system works is huge. It's, we're no longer doing the just like let count equal zero and then it just magically is reactive and works. That is now gone and replaced with the new state system. With the new state rune, we also have an effect rune, we have a derived rune, we have all these different runes to handle these pieces of reactivity in our applications. For me personally, these are a huge win. I come from a React background, and to me, the way they've really felt from the beginning is these are very similar to like the React state hooks, like use state, use effect, uh, et cetera, et cetera, except they're a lot cleaner and nicer. Like the effect rune is like the use effect uh, hook, except instead of having like a dependency array and dealing with all that stuff, the effect rune is just smart enough to know, automatically know when to rerun based on the things which have been passed into it. The state rune is very similar to use state, except instead of having a getter and setter, we can just get and set off of the state. These work really well, they're really clean. I've linked down below a ton of really great videos which go over these runes in depth. We're not gonna do that today because it's been talked about a lot. Instead, I wanna talk about another piece of the runes which is really how we can use these and actually how stores are gonna work in Svelte 5. In Svelte 4, we had the writable syntax. I never really got super into this because I kind of started getting into Svelte very close to the end of life cycle for Svelte 4, so I've really been getting deeper into it just with Svelte 5 with the beta and all that stuff. And one of the more useful things you can do in SvelteKit is create these like store objects, which you can just import into any component. I built out a little example here. Um, let me show this. Shout out to Suspicious Cash on Reddit for this really great example. This perfectly sums up what I was looking for. And basically what I did is we create this little counter. Um, we create this little counter, which is actually a class. And I'll talk about why I think that's a good thing in a second. We create this counter and we can then work with it within our application and also share that state as like a source of truth between different components. The way I sort of like to think about these is we basically end up with like this store which floats out in our application somewhere. This is kind of just like a visualization of what our application might look like. So we have our page.svelte which has all its state and stuff like that and we're using the counter in our page.svelte. So these guys are communicating back and forth. We are holding our state and storing it in here almost like um, I don't know, this is very back-end brained, but kind of like, kind of like imagine like a database almost, if that makes any sense. We sort of have like this data store, which is storing our counter value. We have a bunch of methods that we can work with and we can consume that in our page.svelte. But we also have our increment.svelte over here, which is a component, which we are then socketing into our page.svelte. And normally it'd be a huge pain to share that state between the page.svelte and the increment.svelte. Traditionally, what often you would do is you do like prop drilling or something like that. In React, you could use something like context, all of that works. But in here, what we can do is we can actually just connect this counter to our increment.svelte. And then whenever we make a change to our counter within our page.svelte, that change will also be reflected in our increment.svelte because they're pulling their data from the exact same data source. And the way this works, the way this works in code is really simple. In my little demo.svelte.ts, I create this counter class and now that reactivity is tied to runes, we can use these runes in .svelte.ts files and just create really nice reactive boxes which work like stores. So I can go in here and create this little counter class. It's gonna have a count and an incrementer. I'll have an, this increment method which will go through an increment count by whatever the incrementer is. And then I'll have a reset function which will just set them back to the, which will just set them back to their default values. Down here at the bottom, I create a new counter and I export it. And then what I'm doing is within my page.svelte, I'm gonna import that counter, and I'm also gonna import that counter in my incrementer. So in my incrementer, what we're doing is I'm binding the value of counter.incrementer so that anytime we change this input, which the, um, which the actual application looks like this. So anytime I'm changing this incrementer, this will actually change the incrementer value within the class. So we go, we set it to like, say let's set it to two. So now our incrementer value, if we go back in here, is now set to two in state. And then if we go back over here to our page.svelte where we're also consuming this counter, I can go down in here and on my button here where I do counter.inc, it's gonna increment it by this counter value. So I'll go over here and I'll just start incrementing and you'll notice it's going up by two. If I set this to be four, it'll go up by four, et cetera, et cetera. And it's really cool that this works. If I hit reset, it'll reset it for all of them. And basically now all of our, shape, our state is being shared 
through this store. And this syntax is so much more intuitive and so much cleaner than the writable was. You can also do this with functions and returning like getters and stuff like that. For me personally, I actually much prefer this class syntax. Obviously, we're not using the things that can make classes really painful and bad, like inheritance or abstract classes or any of these different things. I have a I did a lot of that in college. I'm kind of good for now. Um, so for this, we're really just using these as a place to store a bunch of state, have some methods for working with this, and it feels really, really good. Now, another thing I wanted to talk about in this video was going to be snippets. Snippets are something that I've barely seen anyone cover, and they are really, really useful. One of the biggest things I like about React is the fact that I can define a bunch of different components in a file. In Svelkit, it very much feels like the components are very page-based, if that makes any sense. Like, certainly in Svelkit, we have like our page.svelte, and then that page.svelte has associated with it like the server actions and the load function. It's all very grouped page-wise. And with our markup before, the only way we could get something to be like repeatable is we had to abstract that out into a component in a separate file. I couldn't just write a little snippet of code and repeat it, which I did all the time in React. I really liked being able to go down and say, you know, for my to-dos, if you're doing like a to-do app or something, you can go through and just create a to-do component. And then in your loop, you can go through and just render out that to-do component instead of having to stick all this markup in here. That also means we can use this elsewhere, et cetera. It's really nice to have. And now with Svelte 5, we can finally do that. This new snippet syntax is really intuitive. And one of the things that it really benefits from is another major Svelte 5 change, which is that TypeScript just works everywhere. Uh, before, it didn't really work in the markdown. You couldn't add it, like if you had like an on-click function or um, probably the most egregious example for me personally was in uh, like form actions and stuff like that in the uh, progressive enhancement when you did use enhance. You couldn't put types in there, so you had to do weird stuff, especially since those typically come back with a lot of um, optionals or unknowns and stuff like that. So it really helped to be able to put types in there. But since you couldn't, you had to abstract all that into a function and put it up here. And it was just kind of meh. But now we can just do all of that in the code because we can run TypeScript in here. We're giving this to do data a type of name and ID. And whenever we go down here to this at render method, this at render is what actually renders out our to do. We can go in here and pass in our to do data and it knows exactly what it needs. If we pass in the wrong data, we'll get a type error. All of this just feels really clean and nice to use. The last thing I want to talk about, which will probably impact your day to day by far the least, but I still think is worth mentioning is the fact that instead of doing on colon click for our event handlers, we're now just doing on click. I think the easiest way to explain why this matters is just from the documentation itself, because this is, like I said, it's more niche, but it is useful. What it allows us to do is it'll make passing props down into um, components and stuff like that much simpler and easier. For example, in here, we have this example where we're passing an on click into this button. Say, for example, you're building out an internal UI library. You need to have your button component. Obviously, that button's going to need an on click. It's a lot easier to just pass in an on click function and then immediately pass that in here. It also allows us to go through in here and actually spread our event handlers so we can have props coming in from props and then we can just spread those into our button and pass in any different event handlers we provide an on click, uh, whatever else we need to add makes that a lot simpler. I think the best way to sum this up is the way the Svelte team did is the whole reason they did this is to reduce the learning curve to remove boilerplate, especially around create event dispatcher, which was pretty bad beforehand to um, remove overhead of creating custom events because now that they're just functions there's no like weird custom felt stuff you have to learn it's just like okay we're passing functions down into our components great it makes a lot more sense it allows us to spread it allows us to know which event handlers need to be provided to a component it allows to express whether or not it's required or optional this is a big one and also it just increases type safety, which has been a big theme in Svelte 5. Overall, I just wanted to call this stuff out and kind of bring attention to this. Like I said, Svelte 5 is basically here. It's not technically production ready, but I'm using it in prod. And I think most new projects should certainly be started with the new Svelte 5 stuff. Definitely go try this stuff out. With snippets and classes, it is a whole new framework and a whole new world. And I think this future of Svelkit is very bright. I think for me personally, this has really kind of just become my favorite framework. It just, it, it vibes really well with my brain. It just kind of works for me. Uh, I know Next.js clicks with other people better. I've tried out Nuxt lately and Nuxt works really well too. But just for me, this just makes the most sense. I've been really enjoying it. And yeah, if you guys enjoyed this, make sure you like and subscribe and I will talk to you soon.